Oh yeah, we're doing this. Everyone's got their own story, and today we bury ourselves in the pages of a time-tested classic. Grab hold, I'm diving into gaming's greatest novel, the Paper Mario Trilogy. Irreplaceable fantasy gems that swear on their game over to never stop kicking up magic. They're the type of games that feel like they could only exist in fairy tales. Yes, I said trilogy. Like it or not, cause really who does? Sticker Star and Color Splash are their own thing. Let's not go and pretend they're in the same league. Show enough support and I'll shine the light on them another time. But for now, I take my bow. I know what you really want. We begin where we should with the music. Unlike Mario and Luigi, Paper Mario has gone through multiple composers, each pouring their heart and soul into a refined stockpile of enchanting, charming, and all-powerful arias. I naturally have my favorites, but I'm making sure to retain equality. All three games are given the same chance to send their five strongest pieces into battle and see who makes it the furthest. Also, this applies to all four lists made in in this marathon. Spoilers will run rampant. Fold your headphones over, in we go. <laughs> Super Paper Mario deserves a pat on its flop side for dipping its first big steps into waters all have tread. Not without some fancy new flippers, of course. As the prism treetops form, so does the breezy current of a bouncy tune. It puts you into a great mood right out the gate, and I assure you'll be devoted to saving all those worlds the instant you hear the bells. And if you like Mario World, or the classic from 85, the half minute mark just kisses your ears. What a nice way to say welcome. <laughs> hearing the theme of Little Me. Uh, sis, when did we start rhyming? Since now, you wretched cow! Also, isn't the theme for all three of us? Please, Vivian, shut your yap! This track ain't some shitty rap! Hear those clacks! Bewitching tempo! G G yes, dear, quite the show. is inspirational. Paper Mario 64 admires that term so much that it has the stars wish upon you. Speaking with the star spirit is an emotional power trip, and for all the right reasons. The surreal image of an all-important MacGuffin exchanging its gratitude and pleas for your help. Man, that's what adventure's all about. This piece is so pure, so righteous, you likely forget you're still on Earth listening to it. Someone, line up a bunch of water glasses and make a cover of this using a spoon. I will pay you. Whoever said, listening to the same thing over and over again gets old. You better be named Ripley, cause believe it or not, you're a liar. I've listened to the original game's standard battle theme so fucking much. And I'm convinced star points generate life force, cause it never 
grows old. 30 seconds, looped, simple, repetitive, the marks of an ear grating song. But fuck, it's so good. You don't need the experience. You don't need the experience. You don't need the experience. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> The darkest game has the cheeriest music. I'll fork over a million rubies to whatever schooler explains how that works. The soundtrack that fills Chapter 2's Gloam Valley is so energetic, so bouncy, it makes me motion sick. The vibrant composition and nimble pacing. Oh, God! I bet all 98 of my pro kill streaks that this track was ripped straight from a scrapped Spyro game. It's that catchy. Meh. Gotta open up for Demon Bitch and the Gerbils with something good, don't ya? a video without a Bowser appearance. A cruddy video, that's what! No other time than now to savor the Koopa King's final stand. Ever hear Bowser's mixtape? I can't sleep without it! Paper Mario 64's final boss theme isn't a fan of the bullshit. It gives you exactly what this scene lays out. An end-all be-all tussle with the Turtle Titan. The sound of an explosive war within castle walls comes to mind. 1v1. Top of the castle. Electric guitars only. Jesus. 2007 was just the fuck it, Mario, you're going to space year, wasn't it? Guess the dong didn't expand well in a vacuum, huh? I gotta say, I'm actually surprised not to see the SMG orchestra listed in the credits. This is a top-notch interstellar anthem that oozes triumph and adventure. You know, after being roped in with Scorps the Celestial shit stain, I could use a little deep space epicness. Fill up on those paper star bits, it's gonna be a ways. shift, the chambers within the cryptic crystal palace conceal interesting notes. Never have I ran into hints of beautiful and creepy in such an unorthodox place. Uncanny and complex, it's the type of music that turns diligent players into open-eyed meditators. Still playing, but also lost in thought. The second you focus down that subtle reverb, you'll be led astray by your own reflection in the palace mirrors, while feverishly hunting for the source of that mystic echo. Paper God that opening, the audio behind the Shadow Queen's resurrection isn't just chilling, it rips out spines and seals them in a cryo chamber. Ominous tone with erratic form and chords sharp enough to gut you with 
by all means, a scary piece that paints a scary image. I picture nothing short of reality's most powerful and most terrifying evil pinning me down with dialogue too frightening to reply to. Right on the money, Mr. and Mrs. Composer. <laughs> Yep, I went there. I like to believe that there exists a mutual counterpart for many things from Mario and Luigi within Paper Mario. Twas only a matter of time until the storybook counterpart of In the Final reared its royal head. The ultimate show is an ode to charm, chaos, and uncertainty. It's the end of the world if it were the finale of an all-powerful magician's show. You know you're good at your job when one doesn't even need context to absorb the magic. I'd call it overrated, but that's pretty silly when you're part of the problem. For purity! Classics never die. Paper Mario 64's own Super Boss is first rate, and his battle theme is too good for a number. I never tire of hearing this champion of a battle theme. Loud, proud, empowering, to the point where an eternal vision of your final trial as an apprentice hijacks your mind. The dojo is silent. The badges are set. The strongest toad on the planet falls to day. This one stuck to me like glue. When Thousand Year Door wants you to panic, you panic. The unusually memorable danger theme is a master manipulator, able to permeate even the toughest nerves with its striking notes. Ultra tense pace and chaotic arrangement, it plays tug of war with your anxiety. No time for thinking. Move! Who the fuck is Rockhawk? Cortez's battle theme. Oh. <laughs> Do they even make this kind of badass anymore? The Ballad of the Seven Seas and its ruler shivers more than ye timbers. Tis a blood-curdling shanty laced with the Pirate King's fearsome charisma. Scallywags cower over its formidable tone and none escape once the blizzard of bass rips their sail in two. My favorite boss theme from Thousand Year Door? Aye aye, amigo. You know, I like to think words are good enough description for just about anything. 
Can I now say that I'm happy to be wrong? The monumental score, tailgating the Crystal Star's ascent, is a masterpiece with a message. All those you saved, every face you fought for, sends their regards. We believe in you. For those invested, it's a thousand good reasons to tear up. After seeing the words of a certain man in green, you can bet I did. Beyond that, it's an awe-inspiring work of heart that caresses your very own. Impressive, moving, all who hear this serenade of solace will wade through the ultimate darkness without fail. I've waited a long time for this chance. My number one pick has both puzzled and haunted me for an entire decade. Cherish what you have, for anything is better than nothing. <laughs> Is musical hypnosis even possible? After enduring Super Paper Mario's Chapter 6, I'm convinced. World of Nothing is a mutant amongst symphonic creation. No other musical piece has left me wondering so much about so little, on top of making me feel in ways I never knew I could. First off, I'm not ashamed at all to say this is the scariest video game BGM I've ever heard. A horrifying vortex of distorted, unnatural acoustics that promotes almost interpretive abstract thought. Essentially purgatory in audible form, playing this releases the screams of those forsaken to the gap between life and death. A flux of forever dissipated hope and a mesmeric dispute over your own insanity. Trapping this within your thoughts is like dispatching yourself from tangible existence, endlessly wandering about your own personal limbo, fearfully pondering what it must be like to be nothing. It's disturbing and fascinating in the most extreme ways. Only now do I know the true meaning of null and void. This has been Fawful's Minion. See you next chapter. Thank you.